Hey, Carp Anglers, James Sanders, the two fish stars in town. Oh, he Oh, my God. Can I, can I say my name or what? You know what I mean? Uh, Tom Chris, how you guys doing today? Uh, people out there in the Facebook land, how you guys doing? Just thumbs up. Uh, you are, you guys are also our guests on our show too. So, but yep. you guys are more welcome to uh, give us feedback. Give us some feedback. Definitely need the feedback. Definitely need the likes and the yeah. shares too. Questions for uh, Mr. Rick Slinker. Also, uh, yeah, we'll be getting to that here soon. Yeah, you well, guys, want to give out a shout out to your team or your flavor or carp flavor or sponsors? You know, go ahead and do that too. Uh, but uh, all right, well, how's your day? Good, man. Good. Uh, Good. Trying to get everything ready for this chili meat, man. Yes, sir. Chili meat. Got a lot of um, got a lot of people going to be there. A lot of good products. Uh, yep. we're, we got some products here that we're going to go over here and. Oh, here in a second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, but yeah, real quick. Here's your carpet chili meat, 17th annual. This has been going on for 17 years now, and this gets bigger and bigger each year. And we've actually had the, you know, we've actually been blessed to be able to take it over. Oh yeah, definitely. After sure. you know, after Jim had closed down Westside Bait yeah. and Tackle and everything like that. The so, Jim. Yeah, we, everybody does. You know, he'll mm -hmm. always be. Uh, He'll always be family. Yeah, family with us because he's done a lot for us, everything like that. But there's going to be a lot of people that's, you know, going to be there. Hopefully, you know, he'll show up too. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but uh, real quick, the Here's Your Carp Chili Meat. Uh, doors open at 10 a.m., ends at 6 p.m. Uh, sponsors, <laughs> it's going to be all set up. I think we have maybe a good 17, 18. Yeah, uh, sponsors. So let's call Mr. Rick Slinker. Okay. Anybody know Rick Slinker? Give me some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. You know, for people in uh, Facebook land. Uh, also, check us out on our Team Fish Fire YouTube channel. Uh, it's, this video here is also cool. It's, tell you the truth, it's cool that you guys watch it live right now. And you guys give us your shout outs and thoughts and everything. But also, uh, check it out on our YouTube channel because the video will come out here. And the photos. That we talk about on on the show, yeah, like of, pop up of, of Rick's fish and yeah. stuff like that, yeah, or beautiful. even Gilbert's fish. Like you guys yeah. have to go to the YouTube yeah. page, you know, and actually watch the videos to see that. Rick is an amazing carp angler, uh, but uh, but for us going live like this, you know, this is, you know, obviously the, a lot of people know maybe who we are, you yeah. know, what we do and what we've done, you know, but there's a lot of people out there that don't know. And that's why we've been going live on pretty much our podcast here lately is because we want to get everybody involved as much as possible. Let's get them. Let's get them on the horn. Let's do it. They don't want to hear us. They want to hear Rick Slinker. <laughs> Rick Slinker. How you doing, brother? How you doing, Rick? This is uh, James Sam. James Sam, Tom Pearson. Tom. <laughs> uh, you're on Carp Talk. So, how you doing, brother? Awesome. Yeah? Glad to be a part. I heard you just come back from Dale Hollow up your own. Yeah. 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 Real quick, we want to uh, we want to wish you a happy birthday. Yep, happy birthday. Oh, you just had a birthday yeah, yesterday. I got, that, I got that reminder yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you now? That's fifty four large. Are you really? Uh, uh, unfortunately, I thought I was older than you. Uh -oh. No, you're the old man. Yeah. He said, "No, nope, you're the old man." I'm gonna be fifty two this year. Wow, you're fifty four. Huh? Well, that's cool. I knew we were around the same age, but I didn't think that. Right. All right, cool. So, anything special been going on? No, no, the, uh, I, I think the groundhog messes up for another six years, but yeah, it hasn't stopped us from getting out. Uh, yeah. Spring is coming. Yeah, yeah, Mother Nature is kind of doing bipolar on us right now. Well, this uh, is, you know, that's what happens in Indiana, though. <laughs> yeah. 
She is the most bipolar lady I know. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean I'm sure we've high all flashes been. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's called that's menopause, James. That's, oh. that's menopause. Right. <laughs> old, old man winter doesn't know when to leave, and yeah. Mother Nature comes in with a bang. Yeah. Okay. So uh, okay, real quick here. Uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and uh, tell us about yourself, what you do, what you know. Um, Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, a little bit about your background for the audience that don't know you know the great Rick Slinker. Oh, so. <laughs> um, again, name's Rick Slinker. Uh, probably been in the uh, cart game for a long, long time. I if you had to put years on that, how many would that be, Rick? Um, shoot, I would say... Years of seeing it. My yeah. dad used to go to the, you know, the Pay Lakes and he was a catfish guy. Yeah. And I could see those other guys catching these other fish and I, I wanted to know more about it. And once I got into it, I, I never looked back, period. Um, 2003, I'd make Gilbert Huxley yeah. at Oaksport Travel Show and he was selling those uh, you know, memberships to that car maintenance group. He mm-hmm. was giving us a magazine. Um, I had a sales pitch of, you know, you just got in the show come back with your 20 bucks sign up i wasn't leaving that booth until i signed up i was just crazy and from then on i, <laughs> I just was a wild angler and then the euro was, the tackle they used was crazy yeah it definitely is that um so uh kind of jumped off the deep end yeah did quite a bit of traveling was blessed to travel and fish a lot of tournaments all over u.s um, I've been to, um, you know, world uh, championship status tournaments, say, there in New York. Yeah. So, you know, I, got, I was blessed to be able to do some stuff like that, see some stuff, meet just a crazy amount of, you know, great people. Yeah. Well, we had your uh, buddy, uh, Gilbert Hugsley, on our podcast last week. That's and not my buddy, that's my dad. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, he is a bad guy. It's more than that. Uh, yeah. Because Gilbert's the man, man. Yeah, he is the man. Yes, um, he is. And Ray, and, and for the, you guys, uh, I saw for the people out there just watching, though, hey, for me. Rick, hey, Rick, Rick, Rick's the man, too, man. He's been around doing this a long time, man. Yeah. Helped pay the way. Ran a lot of tournaments, you know, from... He's, yeah, For, you know, just he's just helped out tremendously. He started out the user carpers. Yeah, right. I was, I think, brain a storm of Gilbert, myself, and Jim Donlin at that yeah. time. To, cool. I think it actually, yeah, I mean, he had listened to Gilbert's uh, watching the podcast. It actually started out as in carpers. I yeah, that's where he had his name, and then because it grew all over the state quickly, it just became the Hoosier and included the whole state instead of just Indiana. Who started the autism tournaments? Was that right? Uh, I we did we had started that. Um, just I had a nephew, a lady I was with then had a family member. Right. It just seemed right. There was a lot of tournaments going on, you know, helping out this the Riley kids still. Which has been um, great calls. Just thought, you know, hey, you know, we can you know help out ourselves here too, and started that up. But uh, any, are you sponsored? Uh, like world classy bait. I mean, as far as bait companies, yeah. Um, you know, I always say that you know it's going to take a lot in the U.S. to show that you know the carp is worth. And if that's you know flavor companies, bait companies, diet services, clubs, groups, that's what it's going to take. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, if it's if it's not from you know the newest bait company here in Indiana. Uh, Big John's Bait with Prisley Trizzler, yeah. to probably the longest running U.S. bait company and it's called World Classic Bait. He's actually I've watching right now. Pleasure to fish it. Yeah, they, for 14 years they were here. I've been with them pretty much every year. <coughs> nice. yes. Now, uh, I, my dad said if it's not broke, you don't fix it. Exactly. It's exactly. Just, I go with that motto too. Um, so, how long have you been with uh, World Classic Bait? 14 years. Wow, 14 they years. They come in and I think it's 2008 they had started. Yeah. And I was pretty close to starting with them as they become a company. So how did you meet up with uh, World Classic Bay? Um, I think Jim pretty much set it up. Oh, Jim did you? Jim West right. Side. Kind of missed that place. Oh, um, definitely. You and me both. Magdalene, uh, Magdalene and Ernie 
are uh, are the owners, right. and had come to Jim asking for representatives for their, the bait company. Okay. And it just so happens, um, 2008, I had won the second time or the second national out of Washington D.C. So they were asking about me. Um, Jim put in a good word. And well, there you go. It's a match made in heaven. Match made And you've been to their headquarters. They are they're located in uh, Illinois, Chicago. Uh, I've been Chicago. They're pretty close <coughs> to Chicago. They're out on the outside, on the suburbs. Okay, nice. nice. And yeah, I, I love going up to the the world class eBay kitchen and helping out. And, you know, seeing you know the actual products and oh, yeah. helping out. Um, you know, plus you know, especially back when Jim was in business, we would go up there, um, help out with the baits, the the orders that Jim would put in, and then just bring it back to Indiana. So well, that's great. That's awesome. Time. It's a great S place. Save on shipping. You know, they're not just a big company to me after, you know, this long. They're just they're part of my family. Yeah. That, that I met Magdalene and Ernie. You know, they're great, great people. The uh, best. Oh, yeah. They, I think I've met them, too. They've been yeah. here, too, They've, haven't they? Yeah. Didn't they, 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 got, yeah, they, just, they were a big sponsor of the, the Tournament Trail Jim Run. Yeah. They were a big sponsor. Big sponsor. Quite right. a few of them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and see, and that's what we're trying to get back to, man. We're trying to yeah. work, you know, nothing against the Pay Lake or Pay Lake Industries or owners or anything like that, but we're trying to be more focused on the wild water side because yeah. obviously the wild water side is where everything is really going to get noticed before anything else, and we just need to get back to our roots, I feel, yeah. you know, and that's what we've been talking about. But, uh, uh, yeah, like... World class is big. I love the product. I, got, uh, I love everything. I met Magdalene a couple times. Uh, sweet, sweet woman. I mean, she'll help you out with any kind of sponsors that, you know, generous donations all the time. Uh, and they get, you guys got some great, great product too. Uh, what's one of your favorite uh, uh, products that you have that they have? World class big. He's probably going to say them all. Yeah, you yeah, they all yeah. Right. I'll say, I mean, you can't say them all. It's yeah. One of the things I like about World Classic Bait is, you know, they kind of kept it small. They didn't blow up, you know, yeah, they right. got Baskin Robin 31 flavors. <laughs> they had, you know, a dozen or better flavors that are proven, they're good flavors, and they went with those flavors. And again, 2008, 2022, I'm yeah. still catching fish on this product. Guys. I mean, the, what's special with their pack bait, though? thing I, I, I like about their pack bait a lot is how fine and grind the, their particles are. You know, all the particles is all grinded down, right? Am I right? Or Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's put through the grater and, yeah. and mixed. Um, I think the Ernie's method mix is probably one of the best, or I'll say at least when Jim was running Westside, yeah. Ernie's method was the best selling method in the U.S. Right. Yeah. Now, when you use that, Rick, I mean, do you, do you just, like, make that a pack ball, or do you add it with some oats? I cut it with some oats, oats and uh, some steamrolled oats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and panko, uh, the Japanese bread, uh, panko. Um, it's probably it's be a, a two-part. If two-part is a bowl that you use in the scoop, uh, two parts oats, two parts dirty, and one part of panko. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can put, you know, extra goodies, some uh, pellets, corn, your maize that you cook up on the bank, throw in it. You got some small boilies, put them in the quarter crusher. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to put a little extra freebies out there. Okay. Uh, now, real quick, people out there on, on our live on Facebook, if you guys got any questions that you guys would like to ask Rick, just let us know too. Um, so I are just like literally just, just, said it, just asked, it was like, does World Classic Bait still have 3D? 3D flavored powder. Oh yeah, I remember that. They do. Yeah. They do. Rick said they do. Uh, it's one of the one of the good products. There's a lot out there. It's an attractive. It's yeah. a dry powder, so it. I like their banana. It doesn't limit your, it, just about anything. You can put it in your dry mix. You can put it on your wet material. Um, cast it out there. And just emits that cloud. One of those clouds is. You know what the carp are looking for. That's yeah. uh, Can you guys hear Rick uh, okay, like pretty clear and everything like that? 
Just give uh, us a thumbs up if you could hear him. Uh, hey, um, some guy named Kenny Mac. I'm Kenny Mac. I'm sure who's, he's who's that? Yeah, some I don't know. There's some Kenny some Mac. random uh, guy watching That's, our Facebook. Actually, Kenny Mac. <laughs> Hey, he had. We'll be talking about Mr. Mack here in a minute, I guarantee you. Oh, yeah. You uh, wait your turn, Kenny. Uh, wait your turn, right. man. Hey, his question was uh, he said, What was your best comeback win in a tournament? Oh, there you go. I'm sure Kenny heard about it. I would say. <laughs> and he said, he, he, he said that, and he said, uh, How much time was left in the tournament or something like that? Yeah. How much time was left in the tournament when you took the lead? Also, so I guess both of them questions go back with hand in hand. All right, I think he's digging too far. I, mean, I don't know if I remember any <laughs> tournament that you know it was it come down. I mean, they all come down to nail biters. No, they do. Car tournaments, you could be in the lead. And Man, you know, isn't it? Thirty minutes, and you could just have the best lead. You could probably start, you know, the old saying, "Don't count your chickens." Where they hatch and start celebrating because that last five minutes, that last minute, those rods stay in here in England. You those rods, you, you take rods in the water. Yeah. Those rods don't leave the water until that bell rings. Exactly. If you hit that fish, exactly. I know right, right all too rings. well. Shoo. That last like. fish could make the difference. So yeah. And they're all nail biters. They're all yeah. excited. Yeah. Not unless you're like down to the. You're up 50 points, and this guy don't have no female, like two pounders, and that's about it. You know, 50. Then I can say, like, you know, no way in. I don't know. It could be wrong, too. You catch a 32 pounder. I mean, but. You could go, you could start, you could be in a tournament, and, and the night going into the night, just have the crazy lead. Mm -hmm. And by the time the weight's posted the next morning, it's, it's, it could be nasty on you. Yeah. So, uh, well, I got a couple. We got a couple questions. These are kind of qu questions that we ask all our guests on our show. Uh, but you know, of course, each answer is always different. You know, towards the one carpet or that we ask the questions to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, uh, well, I guess you maybe you kind of said this a little bit, but you probably could go a little bit more detailed with us. Uh, when did your passion for carp fishing start? I would say it would have been probably that first time back to the story about my father. Yes. Yeah. And I was there with him seeing those, you know, guys catching these car and one more of it. Probably that, I would say the very first one I looked in, it, it was it for me. Yeah. I mean, I, and how old were you? later I learned that you could actually win money now that you caught them. So it, it grew, you know, just to the money part too. Yeah. Um, but after, and I had finished this with some of the guys that out of the pay lake in some warm waters and kind of got that feel. But until I met up with Gilbert in the Carp English Group in 2003, um, it just it changed everything for me oh, yeah. as okay. far as carp. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, that was real passion to, you know, we started, me and Jeff had started Jeff Skelton and started Jeff Skelton. Yeah. Um, that yeah. was a passion even before carp, you know, you watch Bill Dance and them on TV and think how great it would be to be a guide, a fish guide. <clears throat> how is he doing? You're going to be a carp guide. You really get some bad looks. But I mean, the passion still grew there. How uh, how is Jeff doing? He's good. I mean, he's, um, I think he's, you know, he was a little skinny military guy when we met him. I yeah. think he's just living fat and sassy there in South Carolina. <laughs> I think he's doing good. <laughs> he shares the same birthday as I do. His birthday was no just as well. So well, happy, bir happy birthday, happy birthday, Jeff. So, um, do you want to answer a question? Uh, yeah. Well, hang on. Okay. Um, Presley Tyler wants to know. He said, "What's <coughs> the most uh, memorable fish you've ever caught?" Um, <laughs> probably the most memorable one would be my first 30 pound I would say oh, nice. um, I, I fished Indiana it was back you know, that transition time uh, my, my, I think 21 pound was my PB and I was going I met Gilbert we went to Chicago and fished a tournament to the Carp Angles uh, Texas tournament coming up called the ATC was coming up um, it was just called the Big Fish so we get there to fish this tournament um, you know, we're going to bust PB, 
is with one of your catch big fish, and I blanked in the tournament. <laughs> so the very next day, we met up with a couple of anglers to um, Jerome Moisson, which I think was the CAG secretary Nick then, and mm -hmm. another gentleman named Scott Osmond that called, went by the big cart Kahuna, uh, was set in a ball field, which was one of the best spots that had been fished previously in the tournament. Yes. Um, they lifted up the rods and they allowed me and Gilbert to set there and fish. And I caught my had caught my first thirty set there, so I'd say that's my most memorable one. Nice, nice. That's what I'm talking nice. about. All right, well, I got. Let me get. Go ahead. Now, now it's nothing on my list, but there's a story that I always thought was kind of fascinating. Now I remember a long, long time ago. Uh, we was at the CCC tournament together in Chicago. Matter of fact, I think it was the last year they hosted. Is that one we we won? No, no. This is the CCC tournament in Chicago. This is the the last year where they lost the title of being the Chicago Carp Classics. Remember that? Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, just with all tournaments. Yeah. It's, it takes a lot of work to yeah. run these tournaments. An unbelievable amount of time. Yeah. And Chicago just had run out of anglers to host that tournament, to run it right. the way it needed to be. So they turned it into what was called, the, it was still called the CCC, but it right. was the, um, the tag um, cart class exactly. or something like that. But it would run state to state, so whatever state would have the manpower to host it, it traveled to their state. Right. Now, the, but when, you, me, when me and you went there, I seen you throw something into the lake before the tournament. What was that? Uh, that was my cousin Bob. <laughs> he said that. What was that? That was my cousin Bob. <laughs> no, there <laughs> Actually my cousin Bob. This is a beautiful story. This is a this Oh, story. okay. So it okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me let No, me no. Play. You're not that uh, it's 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 definitely a dear story to my heart. Yes. Yeah. You know what? I started out in the Pay Lake and my cousin Bob was I mean, he was my partner. I thought I mean, I'm, I was an actual I'm, person. People yeah. know me. You know, I'm a big guy. Right. My cousin was a little guy. We would be on this gorilla moped on our way to Wagonville, and <laughs> I could hold as much tackle as I could on my big <laughs> self and kept trailing me on this gorilla moped. And the sight just was sore to see. But, you know, Bob was my buddy. He was my partner. You know, he was my car. He was the car pound yeah. to find those things. But Bob also had um, um, diabetes or uh, yeah, sugar diabetes. Yeah. Um, did take care of himself as well as he should. And we lost Bob. Bob was the only reason I actually went back to the Pay Lakes and Fish because it, before Bob had passed, he had no vision anymore and he was in a wheelchair. So right. the year of fishing. Again, it was back in that transaction, going to the Euro and the alarm, so I could take him out of my car and set him on the bank at wow. the daily because of convenience. Yeah. Set him on a blanket, and I could put an alarm on each side of him, and he could hear that alarm go off and grab the rod and play it like, you know, he was standing there, you know, the best day of his life, and I don't care if it was mm -hmm. a bluegill or, uh, or if it was the carp itself. It was always the biggest one he ever caught. He just got a blast out of it. And when we lost Bob, mm -hmm. um, you know, his mom wanted me to take his ashes to Road, which was our favorite place to go wild water fishing. Right. Um, and put him in the water. And I asked her if, if she didn't mind, I'd like to take Bob everywhere with me. And I've still to this day not been to a lake that I have not been to yet and not take Bob with me, but he went to the water first. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. He, he's always there. It's even to this past year after the you know, doing the guide service for a while, I got the pleasure of going up and fishing or over fish one of the uh, ACS tournaments that Wayne Boone and Sean Manning and Clayton Walther put on. A great tournament. Yeah, um, we've done some interviews with them. Too. Oh, yeah. You know, tournament starts, we draw our pegs, we go to our pegs. I take Bob to the water and explain to him, make me look good, help me out here, cousin, and, and let him go. And then, you know, again, I always put Bob in 
Bob's everywhere we go. That's awesome, man. That's a good. That's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. because at first, you know, I really thought that, like, he, <laughs> yeah, I know. Was, like you really had picked your cousin up, you know that. <laughs> that's what I was thinking when you first said that, James. You know what I mean? And for it to turn into something like that. What's wrong with you, man? Kind of makes me, you know, because I know how it feels, man. You know, my brother's disabled too, man. You know what I mean? I mean, not by choice or anything like that, but you know, it is what it is at this point. I've know? heard a couple people like. And it's a, hey, it's 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 not easy, man, taking somebody. Like like that fishing and mm -hmm. having it, you know. That's right. Because you really can't. We probably had our days. We were on the lake for way too long, a week long, and we're about at wit's end with each other. We probably wanted to throw each other <laughs> in the lake. <laughs> that wasn't the case. <laughs> got a question for him? Or anybody on Facebook? Got yeah, one? Preston's got another. He said, where or when did you hit your first ghosty, and what oh. was the size? Good one. That's probably... Um, Good question. I don't think it, yeah, it is making me think, definitely making me young, and I think, I want to say up in Michigan City, Michigan City. I think fish fighters have been up there, the DNR post, I had caught a ghost up there. Yeah, DeWan caught it, um, right? It was, it, it, was in the, it was in the teens, it wasn't a monster fish, but no. it been the first one, because you know, I've been in, been in this a while, and I hadn't had a ghost, so... I'm gonna say maybe seven years ago, around 15 pounds to answer the question, up in Michigan City or Michigan where? City? He said up I in Michigan that's City. Cool. That's I, I feel like there's a lot Can of Can you guys there. hear him again? Yeah. Thumbs up, heart, something, just so you guys, we know you, you, you can hear Rick very well. So, all right, uh, so here's another question, question for you. Uh, who do you look up to as a mentor for advice on carp fishing? The goat. <coughs> Gilbert. Yeah, Gilbert's he's a yeah, I tell you, we had he's a, a very great, knowledgeable person. Yeah, we had a great person. interview with him last week. I mean yeah, I can I enjoyed the podcast. Yeah, if uh we didn't run out of time, I was still been kept on talking to him, man. He just, just Yeah, like yeah. that was probably one of our longer podcasts yeah. too, like he's right. full of knowledge and uh there's a lot of questions I didn't get a chance to ask him, but it's cool. We'll get him. Oh, yeah, we'll get him back. We'll get him again. We'll get him again. Uh, Either that or just pop up on him. Yeah. Right. Just give him a call. He's always ready to talk. Oh yeah. Oh, so uh, I seen a picture of you. I'm pretty jealous of. Uh, you had a. Uh, was it? A, was it? A, you didn't see no Valentine's Day no, picture of him, did no, you? No. 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 <laughs> 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 Sorry. Got, got but no, uh, yeah, from uh, <laughs> over in Del Hollow, um, catfish and carp guy. Oh, Mr. Luke Nichols. Yeah, yes. That was, uh, you know, I always follow his YouTube channel all the time, and it was like, wow, man, and seeing you guys, you and Kenny Mack together and out there with him, and I'm like, man, that's pretty awesome, man. So that's a pretty good story for itself. The story goes back a little bit as back to meeting Kerry, um, Kenny Mack and his buddy Kerry Wright. Right. Um, because of um, some bad floods in 2019 and COVID in 2020, mm. um, I, had a lot, I had a few guys left on the boat that we had to take care of out there. And I had met Kenny and Kerry um, our they were out on the lake last fall yeah. and just uh, it was a reconnection with Kenny because I met Kenny years back but the connection with them just grew into something that you know they keep it, they knew these guys will keep me on this water longer than I expected to be and Luke Nichols come about he had been in contact with me back in the spring okay. 2019 because of the floods right? and we didn't talk to each other we didn't know it's his it was canceled. We can't do this, Mr. Nichols. Um, we'll get back with you. 2020 happened, and we just so happened to be out on the lake last this past spring, 2021, taking care of the anglers. And Luke calls me up and says, "Hey, Rick, I got some time. Um, you got any space?" I told him we're out on the lake. Good luck. You know, um, get your stuff and let's go. He told me he would give his wife's blessing. You know, for sure. Calls me back and he tells me he's coming out. So. 
you can eat carrier out in the boat. And I proceed to tell him that, hey, I got a guy that I met back in 2019. He's going to be coming aboard and we're going to pick him up. And, um, and I mentioned his name and it, you could see the light bulb in Kenny's head like, like pop. I was like, what? And I was like, yeah, you know, what nickels? And he was like, Catfish guy, that door is boys. <laughs> you don't know him? What's wrong? Right. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah, he'll be here. He'll be here. Uh, he's coming in Monday. And Kenny was actually supposed, I think it was a Sunday. And Kenny was actually supposed to leave the lake. And when he realized when he was coming out of the water with this, he had to play hooky from work and spend a couple days. Oh, I don't blame him. I would have been sick for the whole week. I'm like, <laughs> we're talking about Luke here. Man, he's like, yeah, he, he's an awesome guy. I know. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, it's just I got stories just of Luke. Just, just yeah, he, he kind of reminds me of the Peyton Manning. Like, yeah, the exactly. Tall guy, tall guy, just the loving Jimmy, and he's just down to earth. And it's, if you are, he you know, was a big lawyer. Yeah. transformed. He gave that up because he's making so much money on YouTube now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, his kids, he brought one of the kids out with him, Nathan. Nathan was a hoot. Um, just to see the dad interact, you know, the way the world is now, to see the father interact yeah. with the kids like what he does. Well, that's crazy. awesome. We need more of that, really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a definite, definite. That, um, I, think, I think they actually shot about nine hours. They had such a good time. They had about nine hours of video to get that 22-minute YouTube <laughs> shot. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, I seen the video, and, again, I was jealous. Uh, he said again, I was jealous. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, like, wow. And But just listen to him talk and all that stuff, especially about Del Hollow. He recommend Del Hollow is one of the top ten uh, carp lakes people should at least try to go to if they're into carp fishing, if I remember that right. I don't want to say Mr. Luke is wrong. Yeah. Um, but it could be a lot higher up than that. Oh, oh I totally agree. I think... I feel like it's like a, uh, I would have to say the top. There's probably I would say it had to be the top three. It would have to be the top, top three. Top three in the U.S. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Because you got yeah. Michigan. That's it's, they got great stuff up in Michigan area. Um, yeah, but I mean, we're like I, you know, what? Uh, there's I, a lot of great fish. I would probably say like up by Michigan, and I would definitely say new like in my you know my top three would be all right. You know, so that's the great rig. <laughs> no, the, uh, I would say, you know, Top I three. have to go with the, the Texas, the Texas, Austin Lake, Lake Lady Bird. They got some monster buffs in there. In the top. I mean, There's big, they got big commons the there too, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, and, and grass carp, I think, are starting to grow as well, you know, large as well. But it had to be in the top, you know, five, um, just because it's my first favorite. It's still, it's still there. Um, uh, Park Lake, uh, the Seneca River that the tournaments oh, run on the Seneca River. Yeah. That's, that's, that's big fish country, big yeah. water, good times. Talking about like Baldwinsville and stuff like that? Baldwinsville, yeah, the, the Baldwinsville area, they fish the Seneca River, it has to be great. I've had the pleasure of fishing the St. Lawrence, that's definitely. I'm glad to see that coming back. Yeah, I am too, man. Uh, I'm glad that they're going to still host the tournament. Yeah, for sure. The St. Lawrence River still. Paul Hunt does a great job on the Canadian uh, the, the, the yeah. Canadian side of of uh, the St. Lawrence with the, the Carbon Holidays. He does. Is, uh, speaking of Paul Hunt, he's uh, is he holding the record at this moment or Dale Hollow for the biggest carp? I think he is. I'm not. I would say he. Exact to the ounce, but I, I believe it's close to 47, maybe 47. Man, I can't imagine. Oh, yeah, and it's, you know, we're not, we're at 46 even is the biggest one we've had. And that's um, probably not even putting a dent in it. 47, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I've, I mean, in that, oh, probably five years I've been doing this, we've had probably 17 at the 40 mark. Man. Like 46 was, 46 even is the yeah. biggest. I love it when you talk sexy to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're, 
as far as much water as out there. You know, we were talking 30s and 40s. <laughs> Dave's going to have to go in the bathroom here in a minute. <laughs> oh my God. Man, that's what I was saying. I think my biggest one is 32. Yeah, well, this is over thirty. My biggest from down there. I got one out of one out of the river and one out of the lake. Well, actually, thirty-three. Uh, actually, my more. biggest mirror is a thirty-two, and uh, my common is a twenty-nine. How much does that cost? Five bucks. Forty-five bucks. So somebody five bucks. Somebody he's that desperate. you pay that he was he's desperate. desperate. Let you no, pay he's five dollars to hold his fish and take a picture. All right, fifty. Yeah, I was say I know you paid more than five for that it's, picture. It was fifty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Took it all the money on the lawn, man. Uh Mark Tilbury said, What's your um he said, What's Rick's best, funniest time carp fishing? Funniest time at carp fishing. I would put up first with Mark. You guys are Saturday we'll be doing the boat or the uh chili. Yes, you yeah. coming? Uh, I will be there. Nice. Mark Bring up Mark. Mark's one of the guys I look forward to seeing. We had met Mark and his group there at um, the uh, Pathfinders. No, no. The, uh, self Reliance. Yeah, Self Reliance Pathfinders. Pathfinders. This, this Self Reliance Outfitter guys, and they sell a product for the guys that's going out. Yeah. And they're out in the field. Mark. I mean, they're, it's a little bit more money, but yeah. When you when you're in the game, you, you want everything to be there. You don't want. Right. If you're buying product over and over, you might as well buy that product. Exactly. So, yeah. Mark, Mark, I'm looking forward to seeing Mark Saturday. But probably the funniest moment uh, would be one of the tournament trails that Jim was running. <laughs> um, he was fishing. We had a tournament on. Uh, we he was down there in eBay on the Ohio somewhere. Oh, and I remember that. The whole tournament, there wasn't a fish caught. I, I was oh, there. there. You was here? I was there with my dad. I was young. It went to it went to sudden death. Yeah, it was raining. Caught whatever, whatever fish was caught won the tournament. Well, I can tell you. Terry McGall caught a buffalo and won that tournament on that. Well, Rex Fike was in the head. My cousin Rex. Yeah. He was a he was a head. He caught the he he caught a buff. And, and I think and there's a video of it. I was fishing right next to a boat dock, literally. Yeah. Did you see the guy with the, with the cowboy hat? I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure I remember because I was like, I was probably, I was. There. I can't remember how it was, but I know I was with my dad. I was with I my daughter. My dad Terry. went down there, and the water was so choppy. No carp got caught at all. At all. Man, this has had to be like over ten years ago. It was. It, it was no. Like, it was. It was longer than that. It was. A, it's been a long, long time because I'll tell you what. It's been so long. Two thousand seven, eight. Oh, when did One when did we go we with did. Gilbert? When did we? When did uh, when Gilbert was doing the the little carp adventure things on Del Hollow? I went over to my dad's, and this has been a few years ago. You know, like mean, four or five years when we, since we've been to Del Hollow. Right. You know what I mean? So my dad was like, "Hey, son," he's like, "You want this corn?" Corn. <laughs> he's like, you want to eat? You want to shoot five pound bugs of corn? Take with you? I was like, I was like, sure, I'll take them to Del Hollow. And mind you, these this these five gallon buckets of corn have been sitting in my dad's garage since we went to Ohio. So you know, Are I didn't. Dry? No, they was they was like um, fossil fire. <laughs> no, they was like <laughs> everything was like jelly. Ugh. And it stunk so bad, and I I, I, and I would think for that I long, it had to be you know, completely just fossilized dry. No, nope. they was in a five gallon bucket sealed, still had the liquid in there, and it was like like hard gold. That's no, how, like no. it it just it just stunk yeah. so bad, and I should have opened them before. So I don't even open it. <laughs> we I, we we was mixing that in with our chum and shit. That old shit. Huh? Yeah, we caught. I mean, we caught fish down there. I mean, with that. No, I take it back. We didn't catch that. That was the week that we didn't catch no fish. Uh, Gilbert caught a fish as he was packing up that morning, and so did Nick Swayze. And then I came back down. I, I came home for a week, and then I went back for a week. That, uh, but that tournament trail you're talking about, Rick, uh, over at Ohio. I mean, if I remember, we had that. There's, I remember that strictly because I remember getting there early in the morning. It's foggy, foggy. 
early that morning. You could barely see the bridge, it was right there. Right, yeah, most of the trails, we, when we got there, we carried a van to yeah. them, and it was dark when we started, and sometimes dark when we got there. Oh my gosh, I, me I miss that. I miss West Side Bait and Tackle. I miss oh, yeah. the I miss everything that, it's Jim, you know. Yeah, Jim miss, was the heart and soul. We that. miss Jim. You know, he was the heart and soul behind all that. So, you know, we, we can say we admit, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything. Westside Bait and Tackle, you know what I mean? Like, without him and his father and uncle, you know what I mean? There would be no Westside Bait and Tackle, you know what I mean? I mean, just, uh, I tell you, I'm almost, I'm almost, this is my opinion. If you run a bait shop, right, my opinion is uh, to bring more customers in, you got to be, you got to, Treat everybody like it's your best friend. You know what I mean? But Jim, every, every time I walked through that door, Jim was like, he treated people with kindness. He didn't care who he was. He didn't care. He didn't, you could have been the president, president him yeah. not know it, he's still going to treat he's you. Very he's very generous with you know, his donations. And, you know, that's what brought people to come back more and more and more. To him by doing stuff. For he, by, by him doing stuff for Man. people and stuff like that over the years, you know, that makes them want to come spend their hard earned money with him. Yeah. And not only that, you know what I mean? Like, he had everything. Yeah. He even had stuff in there that wasn't selling that still sit there for years and years and years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, there's a... He wasn't partial to nobody. He, yeah. he hosted and gave to the bluegill guy. To yeah, the exactly. The yeah. guy. Yep. All the way down to kids around the corner playing basketball because a lot of people didn't even notice this. You know what I mean? But Wrestling? Yeah, like a lot of the kids in that neighborhood, like they would come in there and buy pops, and they would, but that was their local little candy store. You know what I mean? Like, so he, you know, he, Jim did a lot for everybody. Oh, I don't did. think there wasn't, no, you know, not a, not just the carp community, but the fishing, you know, just the fishing community. Period. Yeah. And then, not including all the sports stuff that we didn't even know nothing about that he was, yeah. you know, that he was helping out doing trophies for. It was like that place was definitely a second home to me. All right, let's see. Yep. yep. What is your PB common and your PB mirror? Well, I was going to mention that long ago when I mentioned that we've had over the years many of Anglers, even Jeff beside me with a brace of 40s. I haven't even made the 40 mark myself. My mirror is a 36 even, and my common is a 37 eight. So, but you plan on breaking them this year, correct? Uh, Oh, that's the people that are on. You know, when we took the guys out, I didn't think he's not fishing attention. and just focused all the attention on the guys out. Yeah. And so, in the mix of whatever the guide service might become, I've definitely gotten out there it's back to getting in the carry, yeah. getting back out there and being able to fish myself. So, definitely plan on beating that, you know, just, just fishing in general, guys. So, are you going to, are you using. Are nice. Are you going to offer any type of guide service or anything this year or even at the chili meet just for the people that well, may be watching? Well, we, we have some just because it's, they're on books. We're right. not looking for, I mean, I, it's, it's, again, it goes back to it's a lot of work. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've got more work than I'd like to take care of right now. So right. I'm mean, not advertising, you know, by no means. Correct. All right, I've got a couple questions for you. What do you prefer the most? Lakes, rivers, ponds, or canals? I would say the lakes. Lakes? Um, big lakes and rivers. The fish are going to fight strong. They're more of an athlete feed. Yes. The fish, um, you're not going to see one end of the river to the next, but big, big lakes is just more... That's the sexy talk for me in the car. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's I just like it better. The yeah. courage can be a little bit more aggravating. Your techniques yeah. are definitely going to be a little different. Gilbert said he loves canals. Well, it's because he's hooked on, he, he's fished our canal for so long. I'm not saying you, I'm not comparing you and Gilbert, I'm just saying. Right. You know. Now, he's had some good success. Yeah. I think 20, 23 is my biggest out of the canal. Wow. He's had a 25, I think. I think he, he no, he has a 30. Or did it, did it, does he have a 30? I could have sworn, no, he said guys are catching 
30s, 30s now. Yeah, I don't know if he's got a 30, but he's, you know, he's got a lot of match, a lot of people's contacts. I think, he, I think Freak's right. I think it is like 25 and some change. Yeah. Yeah. You got a question for him? Uh, yeah. Um, how do you scout out for new swims when looking for big carp? Um, the fall, for us down south at least, the fall is better times, water's down. You can see those um, features coming in the springtime. The fish are, you know, they're hungry. They're going to go and spawn, so they're going to look for warmer waters, um, slate rocks, rip wrap banks, rock cliffs, so are going to warm up faster. Right. Because um, of that slate you know, rock and everything? Channel, the uh, flats coming up into the coves, these areas are going to warm up, so, you know, these would be the areas that we'd look for. Nice, nice. So, all right, we got one for you. Oh, Ricky, 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 Ricky. You ever get make fun of that? Oh, Ricky, you're so fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you ever that? Go ahead, go ahead, sing it. Go ahead, sing it. <laughs> hey, to Ricky, me. you're so fine. Yeah. Hey, Ricky. <laughs> the Ricky was okay. The last name was always the son when that was the. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Okay. We, there really is some nice buffs up here, Austin. Oh yeah, yeah. Big buffs too. What? Okay. What do you think makes a good carp angler? Um, confidence. Confidence. I like that. Speaking of, you know, at a point, confidence is too much. Yeah. But on the bank and what you do, um, how you're doing it, what you did, what you've done. You have to be confident that that's what it was. It's what it took. Uh, good or bad, you have your good days. You have your keep your faith in it. Confidence has to be there. Yeah. Keep your faith in it. That's what I think. That's right. Hard work pays off. Oh, yeah. These things happen for reasons, and hard work pays off. Yeah. So, so would you, uh, I guess, uh, what kind of. Do I, like, yeah, I got one. Okay. Um, obviously, we talked to Gil. Obviously, you, you know, you guys fish together a lot, so I'm probably kind of thinking we're going to get the same answer, but, you know, we're going to go with it anyways. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you put flavors in your pack bait? If so, what is your go-to flavor? Or do you just use flavor on your pickups and no flavor in your pack? The, in the springtime, Pack itself will be flavored as is it's in the bag. If I buy it or get it from Magnolia and them, I will do a 50 50 mix on the, the uh, tiger and banana method. Mm -hmm. That's the flavoring in it. There's no flavoring in the oats, there's no flavoring in the panko. Uh, uh, I might make, add a little bit of uh, the tine into the mix of cooking, uh, sometimes some sugar. Uh, but in the springtime, get back to that, in the springtime, the flavor and the method is just what it is in the bag. Now as the water starts to warm up, then I think more flavor is important to the hot water, um, more flavor. Uh, but in the springtime, if it's, if it's in the bag, I think the method is flavored. I'll go with that, nothing extra, but in the summertime, the boosters, um, cooking flavor into the corn, so what is your what would be your go to flavor if you if you are gonna flavor something? It did be the the tiger nut and the banana has been my favorite. The banana. I like bananas a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Bananas now is that good for just like do you use that all year round? Like even when the water is really warm and hot? All year round. I never change the the method on the mix that I was mentioned, the two two one. Mm -hmm. And the flavor is the same from spring to fall. Okay.
more attractants. In the winter, in the winter time for attractants. Yeah. Do you use like spicy stuff or hot stuff during um, the fall time? Spicy, spicy. It's With cold? Spicy, a spicy pineapple, spicy banana tiger. Mm. But oil based. Oh, really? You can buy a range cube and yeah. you know, drizzle the oil on these range cubes and it'll stay. Doesn't allow the range cubes to bust up as fast. They won't bust up. Just kind of soak it in and hold it. And you right. know, it's chum. Um, you're inside your baits as well. If you put some oil-based flavors in your method and you throw that pack ball into the water as it breaks, you'll see those little pockets of oil. Mm. Mm. You know, flavor. So he, he's doing it again. He's talking sexy. Stop, sexy. man. You're gonna make, <laughs> you're gonna have to make James go get some toilet paper out of the bag. Yeah, talking sexy. In winter time, the carp are slow. They're slowing down. They're not eat much, so you really got to entice them to move. And Unless you put it right in front of them. Yeah, I mean, we can be lucky and pull up to the bank and throw it right in front of them. Uh, but still, you're in that cold water. You're yeah, they don't, little, they don't move very much. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know, you know, in the wintertime and stuff like that, especially in a lot of, like, ponds and, you know, even pay lakes, you know, because there's so many fish in there, then fish will go to the bottom and kind of bury their self like their bottom part right here where they don't have no scales, like they will burn themselves down into the mud a little bit. So again, people uh, out there on Facebook, land, uh, if you want, give out a shout out. Again, more questions for Rich, just let us know. Yep. Uh, Share this live too. Yeah, uh, you'll have to, even if you want to just uh, shout out to your uh, company, uh, big company, or heck, your mom or dad, kids, whatever, you know, give a shout out. Um, um, go on. What is uh, Rick? What is your favorite swim you like to fish? It would have to be Del Hollow. Besides Del Hollow. Oh, besides Del Hollow. Yeah. <laughs> you can't we already know. I knew that. I knew that. I mean, we know it, but I there's knew a lot it. of people out here. Oh, they knew it. Well, I mean, they knew it. it. Yeah, they do. They knew. They knew. Come on, Rick. It's a four or five hour trip for me, so it's not bad. Anywhere in this world, time, where would you like to go? It time doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, anywhere in the U.S., I would probably have to stay back down in Texas for the Texas. big buffaloes. Yeah. What lake is that? You know, or, uh, uh, Lady Bird, ain't it? There's a few of them. If you can find a spot on a fork okay. um, for big buffalo deckers, nice. great buffalo spotters, you know, guys over there, the AC, AC, AS, maybe the carp anglers, the Austin carp crew that do a good job down there. Yeah. Um, there's a gentleman. Oh my gosh, I can't think of Keith's name. Keith does a buffalo tag service down there on deck there. Sisney? I'm sorry. Was it Keith Sisney? 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 No, Keith, that's a good guy that runs Carp Pro, I believe. Car Pro. Oh, oh yeah, he does, Pro, yeah, he does run Carp Pro. They do a good job, like but that. this is, uh, oh my gosh, I apologize, I don't remember Keith's last name. But Buffalo down in there, Decker, um, oh. Austin Lake there, and Emma Long, Lady Bird Lake. Okay. Um, where's another question? Of you uh, carp fishing and all that stuff that you use all in the tournaments, and I asked Gilbert this question just last week, who would you say is your biggest competitor that you fish against to against to all the time that you feel like they're good and that gives you your money's worth in a tournament. There's lots of those. Or uh, let's put. I'm sorry. Let's, uh, we go back to Keith Thompson. Keith Thompson. Name there on, on Texas. So I apologize, Keith. Um, as far as competitors, I mean, there's lots of them. There's a list of them. Yeah, there's a lot. A lot of good anglers out there. Top five. Oh, top five. Let's put the old man first. I'm always going to put the old man first. Sure. When I started, he was definitely. When he says the old man, he's talking about Gilbert. The old man up there. Uh, oh, uh, some of those guys that are the Bogdan McCurr. Oh. Yeah. Good, um, real yeah, good angler. I, <laughs> real good. I fished against both of them. Um, Chris Jackson. 
fished against no, him too. No, I think no. they've all don't they've all fished in New York, correct? Right, right. Paul yeah. Scott. Paul Scott. Um, shit, our very own Brandon or uh, Stephen. Brandon Burr, Steve Brandon Burr. Yeah. Right Killer White River. Right. Shit, if he could show up on time. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's, that's another thing with Steve, with Steve and, and I, I told him this too, I mean, because he fishes the White River all the time. And I said, man, Steve, you're, you're always the bridesmaid, but never the bride. He, he gives the people the run, their money on the tournament, but yet, like, the, he never ran, uh, won the White River uh, tournament or invitationals. Am I right? Greetings from Florida. We got people watching all the way in Florida. I mean, Thank you. Appreciate you. Steve, Share the slide, please. Steve is he? He's, he's. I mean, I agree with you. He's one of the, he's one of the great ones here in Indiana. Uh, we got a bunch there. I mean, we have. There's a bunch of people here in Indiana that obviously. I mean, I, I mean, Rick's one of them. You know yeah, what I mean? Rick. Rick Gilbert. You know, and were, like we're barely even scratching the surface. Well, yeah. that's another there, thing too for the people watching. Charlie it. Napier. Uh, Give us an idea on who you guys want us to maybe maybe not be up next, but maybe somebody you think we should interview on our podcast within the next couple of weeks. I like to I like to get Jim Donlin one time on the podcast. And I think I maybe it'd be nice to get that to happen. To put me back to good anglers, the past brothers, they have past brothers. Yep. Their, you know their trips with Alex. And yeah. That's awesome, man. That's another good video. You know, their dad, Rob, has the bait company. I mean, they're, they're uh, Trilogy Baits. Yeah, but say they're from Chicago, uh, ain't they? No, uh, Michigan. Michi uh, Michigan. Michigan. They're from Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Cause we, uh, we've met them, too, because they've came down. I don't here. think they're going to make it to the Chili Meat this Saturday. This Saturday. Uh, let's um, talk. Dave Ash. Yeah. Dave Ash runs the um, Holland Shoe Tournaments up in Michigan. Holland, Michigan. Great guy. Is that the shoe tournament? The wooden right, shoe yeah, tournament? Uh, it's the Holland, the Holland shoe. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Rick, I got a, I got a question here for you. Uh, Randall McDonald, he said, we're headed to Del Hollow in March. Any recommendations on pack bait to use? Any recommendation on what bait? Any recommendation on pack baits to use? Um, not any, any particular baits, of course, I would tell you, well, classic baits, but a method, a pack bait, I feel is needed. If it's a great ball, a so ball, or if it's an early method, it's ball, I think method is pretty important to keep out there and keep going. It's just a part of keeping the water baited up. Yeah. Like Rick was saying, I don't know if you can really hear him or not, it's, you know, sometimes it's not about the pack bait that you're putting out there, it's about how much and... Chum. Yeah, keep it going. Keep yeah. it going. Keep Don't it stop. You know, because <coughs> you may not think so, but them fish are down there. Especially if you got some bait that they're constantly, you know, uh, able to break down and digest. As long as they can break it down and digest it, they're gonna poop it out pretty much just as fast as they're eating it most of the time. They bring them the big boys once they see the frenzy going on there. Yeah, they pretty much run a straight pipe. It goes in the front, straight out the back. It doesn't. There's no digestive system, so they can pack it in and push it out. And yeah. if you can snap your finger and literally see the fish in the swim, you, you would be amazed and they would clean it out fast and move on. You would have the time of your life for about two hours that afternoon, but then all of a sudden it's, they're going to be gone. So you just keep going. I'm going to give you a, a, a question here. Uh, and you can say pass, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Oh no. What island do you like the most to fish at? I don't know. If you want to say pass, I understand 100%. Well, Goat go would probably be Goat's great. my favorite, but yeah. Goat's one of the islands and many of spots that's been taken away by the quarters because people are just vandalized. Is it really? Really? I'm sorry. Are they they really? stuff up, so they're not taking care of it. So Goat Island was taken off the list of reserve this past this year, or this past year, so yeah. it was my favorite, but you know, I still was, you know, 620 miles ashore, oh, yeah. 7,000 yeah. acres of water, I've yet to fish the best island, the yeah. best spot in the lake, I have not seen it, there's nobody that has. Yeah. 
Yeah, me and that's uh, actually found the best spot. I'm sorry. That so what you're saying is that nobody's actually found the best spot to actually fish because they're all so yeah. great. Right. There's there's yeah. been a lot of great areas fish, but I don't think anybody's fished the best spot. I don't think it's possible. Well, I got a question. I got a question really kind of for myself. Um, obviously, um, me and Mole just recently got a boat this year. It's it's not a pontoon boat or anything like that, but with you being down there so much and obviously understanding and knowing the rules and everything like that, what is the rules for, say, somebody like myself that just wants to go down there, you know, because I have a boat and I can go out to an island and fish and stuff like that? Like, what's the rules, um, I would say, against that? The houseboats on the lake rule the lake, and what gives them the advantage is the bathroom. That's the biggest part because oh. the cores yeah. don't want anybody just rolling up on the bank and setting up camp and fishing for you know a day, let alone seven days like we like to stay on it. Yeah. Um, but it's the bathroom, so if you're just coming out there in a John boat, a uh, pontoon, you can go out there and fish and be on the water by the rocks and you get by with a, a shelter or something over top of you for coverage of rain and stuff, but the rule is there's no structure. Even when you have a houseboat and you bring a houseboat, can you get off the houseboat and set up camp on a land that's not designated as a campsite, a reservable site? Oh, really? The houseboat, the houseboat can set up anywhere. It can warn up on any part of the land. You can get off the boat and fish, but you're not allowed to set structure. So what no. if you? So when did they when did they change that? Did they change that recently to where you can't like? Because I obviously the two times that I went down there, like I didn't even one time I did sleep on the boat a little bit because of, just because it was a little too chilly, but the other time like we we had our bivy up right there in front of our rods, chairs right in there, we slept in our chairs. So did they change that or something? Well, no, it's been like that. It's grandfathered in with the rules of the lake itself it's just yeah the lake there's the core the manpower the core has to regulate what goes on out there is not existent they just don't have it's like the rest of the world out there there's no manpower to run it and right. probably most of the reason that stuff is out there is because it's grandfathered in and it's why they're not fixing it once it's got vandalized they just take it off the map yeah but technically unless you have reserved the site not put tents and structure upon it. Okay. Oh yeah. So uh, so uh, so from what I'm get from what you're saying, somebody like myself couldn't just go down there and pull my boat up in a cove somewhere, fish for a week straight. I would say you could get by with it. Probably could get by with it. Yeah. But is it the rule? Right. It's not the rule. I mean, you reserve. You can get on there's. 37, 39 sites out on the lake that you can reserve, that oh, are reserved, wow. or uh, that's what it was. Again, they've taken some out, but <coughs> those are reservable ones. Right. Outside of that, you're not allowed, but when you get by with it, most likely. Yeah. Okay. Got any questions out there? Like Gilbert, not, well, like Gilbert said, Gilbert said it's always been a rule and no one to... Oh, Gilbert's on there? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Gilbert? Just no one to keep everybody informed on the rules or no. to be there to enforce it, like he was saying, just no manpower. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. So really, it's pretty much pull up and fish at your own risk. Right, oh yeah, that's definite. Um, it's just, there's, if you're not reserving a site, then the core doesn't know that you were out there to come and check to see that it got cleaned up. Right. The trash wasn't left behind. So if it's in, if you're only, if week, week, you're only on this reserved site, then they'll be by, they come by at least once a year to clean the pit toilets and clean up the mess. So right. All right. It's, uh, Anybody what? else out there got any questions for Rick? Yeah, here, I got one for you real quick. What kind of advice can you give on chumming your swim to bring the carp in? Um, yeah, it would depend on, you know, time of year, yeah. you know, the lake itself. 
how much pressure the lake's getting. And if you're rolling up on a lake, it's known to have carp, but you're fishing a spot that has not been fished by carp. Uh, it's gonna, it'll take a little bit more chum to bring them in. Um, Can you over chum? For the anglers, we were taking out, we would chum the water up, um, let's say per swim, two five gallon buckets of corn. Yeah. If we got corn, tiger, a mix of boilies, two five gallon buckets per swim, and then the week before the anglers come back in, so, and then while the anglers are there, we still, you know, tell them to, you know, keep it out of its rebating the rods itself, or, right. um, or your spot, don't right. spot out there once or twice a day, a couple times, you know, nothing big, but you got to keep it going out there. Yeah, just keep it So, going. pretty heavy. If you're rolling up on a spot you've not fished before, I'd say, you know, heaviness, or if you've not got the chance to swim as close to you, run over there through the week and throw a can of corn or something in it and yeah. fish it on the weekend it's definitely going to help you out so would you suggest, like suggest uh chop up with field corn first maize and then uh later on uh just you know they're and they start biting you know they're out there but you want to keep them on your swim more so would you still would you cast out more boilies or would you go back to chop you know Field like corn. The pack and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, pack yeah, still with boilies. Yeah, boilies. Um, if it's method balls, a spawn, you still a couple of times a day, I would say, um, after that morning bite, that afternoon bite is off, and it's starting to warm up, throw some freebies out there, not a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, or before the sun goes back down, um, right before that sun goes down, get a little bit more free baits out there. Um, you know, to make something happen to tonight or that or the morning bite, but never stop. I mean, if you're yeah. fishing with, it's a four rod limit out there. If you're fishing with four rods, yeah, you're four. tearing the fish up on two rods. Those other two rods just need to be rebated. Rebate them, throw them out there, don't let them sit. The only reason the other two rods outside of you're in the hole now I thought, is you're rebating, you're keeping the bait going in. I thought yeah. there wasn't no limit on rods. I did no, there, there used to be 99 rods. <laughs> <laughs> well, not. <laughs> It did. It used to be like 99 rods, and they changed it. <laughs> That's right. Back when Gilbert was first going down there. I mean, I could be wrong. When first started going down there, it was unlimited. But the government back, I don't know, was it 10 years ago now or better, when okay. the government shut down, everything got shut down. And when Del Hollow, when it reopened back up, Del Hollow was one of the lakes that stayed Put, they started charging us because they never did charge you for the reservations. You just still had to let them know you were there. Right. Yeah. But it didn't cost anything. So when the government come back in session, it now costed to reserve the sites, and they changed the rod, the uh, limit of rods to four instead of unlimited. So, uh, so is that three rods in the water with a spawn rod, maybe, or are you allowed to put all four out? I think, I, th I would say, I, I would put out all four. Now, if they come down and caught you spawning, you know, with the fifth rod, too much to see that what that rod was intentions for. There was no hook on it. So yeah, I mean, you've got to have hook it. for the, for the right. charge. Right. Plus, I mean, if you was to go down there for the crappie, I mean, world-renowned smallmouth, and you're fishing with one rod for one of those, you might want to cut back on one of your rods. Right. Uh, keeping it for whatever species you're fishing for, it's a four rods. Right, right. Uh, Randall McDonald has a question, um, which uh, you, you, you can't, um, he, but his question is, uh, how do you keep the catfish off the boilies? <laughs> well, I, I got say it. that's along the same kind of question as, what does a woman want? Yeah, what does a woman want, it's, he said, that's your answer. If you can figure that out, if you can figure that out, that's answered everything. I got, I got, me personally, I got a little suggestion. Uh, if you've got a, a big chunk of meat or something and you throw away from your swim area a little far out, I think that might help out a little bit. Uh, it's, I haven't proved it myself. No. I think I had met during tournaments years back then. Joseph Settles, I think is his last name, right. had, was talking about the exact same thing about using a burlap bag and putting the cut bait into it and uh, taking that cut bait and throwing it down away from, from your, your swim. Right. The right. eaters, the turtles, the catfish away. Exactly. 
<laughs> Somebody else said best way to keep catfish off your line is to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, when we went down to Del Hollow, that's why we always did. We uh, we it was, it was awesome to catch a bunch of channel cats, and then at the end of the week we were done fishing. Fish yeah, a big old fish fry. You know. Yeah, the, the summertime in the fall, you will catch a lot of channels out there. Yeah. Um, we've had we've had anglers catch flatheads up to twenty seven pounds. But it seems more that hot water, the summertime, and that fall is when that happens. It's mostly, it happens all the time. Flats yeah. are the soft shell turtles and the channel cats, um, along with those pesky um, coots <laughs> still in your baits. Yeah, Kenny Mack said, throw some road kill away from your swim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Grant, hey, pull over. You see a deer back here? We're on Grant at. We're going to throw it over here in the swim. Uh, well, speaking of Kenny Mack, how does, how does it feel to work with him? I mean, what kind of guy is he? I mean, uh, is he all right? Yeah, we, we don't need to make his head swell anymore. Yeah. Heads, <laughs> I, I couldn't say enough about the guy. It's just one of those guys. He's a good guy. He's He's helping us sponsor. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's. Uh, well, I appreciate you. He, he yeah. got a hold of you know. I was trying to find a little sponsor, you know, for, but you know he didn't even you know. Shout out to him. But he didn't even want a shout out though. You oh. know what I mean? He was like, who's kidding? Huh? Who's <laughs> oh, now? Now who's kidding? Kim. Now it's not that he didn't want a shout out, man. He oh. just you know he was just he told me he was like he appreciates everything that we do. You know, as Respect. you know, at a, for Team Fish Fighters and what we stand for and what Thanks. we're trying to get accomplished with the carp care and uh, okay, you know, so but, so he told me to give the praise to Rick. So Rick, thank you uh, for everything that thank you, you Rick. do because You're awesome, man. everything awesome. that you do helped the gentleman. You know what I'm saying? For you know, the person that behind us, so right. for the person in that area. That's the way it works. Yeah. That's the way we would like to think and. Want that to work is you scratch our backs, we scratch yours. Yeah. That's what I always say. Don't burn bridges. Never burn bridges. No, because one day you're gonna have to cross somewhere. Yeah. Go there, go back, and it's not gonna be. Okay. Right. And the whole car community. I mean, not just. I don't burn bridges. You know, I, the only thing I want to do is promote carp fishing, the love of it, and just keep make make it stronger and stronger. And carp care. Carp and care. Carp care. Is, carp carp care is, is so important. So. so important. I mean, uh, you got any questions for us, Rick? Yeah. Um, like, uh, no. I like take long walks on the beach. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, we, you know, social media, the way we are anymore, we know pretty much everybody now more than we want or more than we need. Oh, yep. But, I see, I see Tommy out there doing his thing. Your dad, I haven't talked to in a long time. He's, he's a hell of a guy. Yep, he's still James. over there. Same spot. His, his phone number is probably still the same. <laughs> <laughs> James, you know, we see him living the wildlife and the animals in Westlake and seeing his boy grow up. So I know, it's awesome. He's getting big, man. Yeah, he is. Huh? It's crazy. Yeah. I didn't do that. He's a wild man. Jeez. He's, he's going to have to start wearing glasses now. He found out one of his eyes is not quite strong enough as the other one. So it's like, yeah, it that's fine. Start it it is. And get it corrected. Yeah, we see where he got it from. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't start with where these things until I hit about 49. And I'm like, what the world? I, mean, I, got, I got perfect far vision. Yeah, you just can't, can't see nothing close. Know, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, jeez. What time is it? Is this about the time? Looking forward to Saturday. Man, it'd be awesome, man. Yes, we are. I know you're, uh, we're definitely looking forward to it, man. Uh, it's a shame that we couldn't get World, World Classic Bank to come. Uh, right. I would like to see them come up here. But, uh, I mean, it is this. Right. Uh, but, uh, it's definitely going to be a good one. You know, we've been, it's been the work for a couple months. Yeah. Um, also want to give a shout out, man, to mm -hmm. um, Justin Sears. Justin, oh yeah, just what the heck are we thinking? Got to give him a shout out, man, Justin because really Sears. without him, man, yeah, we wouldn't even be able to have this place to even host yeah. uh, the Chili Meat for the yeah. last couple of years. Um, he's the one that, you know, he works there. His I think his father works there too, maybe. Yeah. And he, you know, he's been able to help us for the last couple of years make sure that we lock that in every year to where we have that 
whatever we I mean, just meet, besides last year because of COVID and stuff right. like that. So the whole chili meets it's all basically it's about the, the history behind uh, uh, the Hoosier Carpers and uh, it, just a kickoff to the, the year, the year, the season. The like, it's right around the corner. It's basically a celebrating our our start of carp fishing for this year. You yeah. know what I mean? So. Gives everybody a chance to leave the old ladies at home, wink, wink, unless they fish. Yeah. <laughs> get, you know, people's PBs. But there's more women getting into it there. more, you know, here lately anyway. Oh, so. my gosh, there's a lot of them. Uh, there is. Yeah. yeah. Now there's this little chili meet and the boat sport travel show is what we look for every spring. Yeah. Or yeah. the end of the winter coming into spring to kind of get us out of that cabin fever. Yeah, yeah. Us ready to go. Letting us know, like, it's, a, it's that time. <laughs> exactly. So, but hey, you got any shouts you want to say to Rick? You got a shout out to anybody? Um, I re shout out the guys, Kenny, Kenny, um, Carrie, Carrie, Old Man, um, yeah. always world classic babes, world classic babes. Um, you guys getting into it, you know, anglers, just keep your mind and yeah. you know, keep them, keep an open mind. Keep it very tough. Patience. Yeah. Patience. Yeah. Confidence is all about the confidence. Passion. Keep your passion alive. And don't bow, bad mouth other anglers. I mean, just go with the flow and, you know, and with the whole flavor, the whole flavor stuff, just, you know, you know, just I give them respect. More the barrier to yeah. Because unless we, numbers yeah. is what's going to change right. people's minds. And right. The more numbers, people out there selling it, talking about it. Yeah. Fishing, it's, it's, that's what's going to know. That's what it means. I mean, it's like I do bottom feeder baits, and I'm not saying mine's the best in the world or anything far from it. But you know, there's there's some a lot of good products out there. It all works. Yeah, it all works. I mean, I just works. I'm just grateful that I got you know got a company that you know that I enjoy doing stuff with car fishing. You know, so but we've proved, we've passion. proved you know just like. Rick had said about world class of baits. Oh, I'm saying about bottom feeder baits. Like yeah. the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like bottom, people are constantly yeah. using it. You know, it's here. It's still. It's still around. You yeah. know, world class. Jim Gowland started bottom feeder baits. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And then, you know, I was uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the first field testers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying of bottom feeder baits. And then when Jim Donlin, you know, did away with Westside Bait Tackle, you know, James ended up. Purchasing it, you know what I mean, and running with it, and has made it what it is today, and it's grown tremendously. Yeah. And great products, great pickups. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully, be some some more future st stuff yeah. in the future. You know, yeah. maybe flavor or something Lord like willing. that. Lord willing, Lord willing, you know. But Rick, hey man, we have, we appreciate you so much. Hundred percent, man. Uh, 100%. Appreciate. Not just for being on the podcast, man, but just everything that you've done the part, and, you know, to because without you and, and and Gilbert and other people like that, you know what I mean? As you guys, uh, money, you guys have paved the way. The foundation of yeah, uh, you guys are like the foundation of like you know just building everything that's still being built now. Yeah. So. Appreciate it. Glad to be a part of every bit of it. Well, so. Yeah. All right. Well. Guess that's part coming pretty close to the end of the show. Uh, Rick, again, thank you, Rick, for uh, coming to our show. Uh, I always say, uh, okay, support your local bait shops. But hey, Rick, we appreciate yeah. you, um, <laughs> and we'll go ahead and let you get off here so we can finish the rest of the podcast. But thank you, like I said, again for everything that you do. Yeah. I appreciate you being on our podcast and taking the time out of your day. Uh, thanks, Rick. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Uh, Bye. Bye. All right. So, support your local bait shops. All of them. Naptown Bait and Tackle, yeah. Adams yeah. Outdoors. You know, Adams Outdoors and Naptown Bait and Tackle, or are not or but are one of you know our main bait shops that a lot of our local guys here in Indy go to to yeah. get their carp needs and stuff so like bait that. Tackle, you know, uh, Indy Bait and Tackle. There's other places zone. that's you know that's out a little bit further, but yeah. those are our two main spots. You know that we get them all of our main stuff from. Uh, who else we got out there? Oh, we you know it's just that. Give out shout out to some of your guys' uh, your guys' bait bait shops out there on our show. Uh, you know, Staples. Uh, was that once? St staples? That's the Staples? Where? Staples? 
What's the name? Oh, uh, Staples. Staples, yeah. Or, is and it the, Staples or Staples? Staples. South Carolina? Yeah. That's, yeah. <coughs> he does raffles every day. It's a, it's a, it's yeah, a, bait, it's cool. a, it's a little bait shop right there. Yeah. For carp. Always, always do carp care. Yep, always. You know, always support landing carp mat. care, landing mat, baby changing mat, whatever yeah. that you got, you know, even if it's a couch cushion. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Something like that. Couch cushion. Uh, <laughs> another person I wanted to shout out yeah. to, um, he recent, they recently just made a post a few days ago. Um, I want to give a shout out to Tyler Christ. Oh. Um, he is the new owner and operator okay. of Carp King Flavors. Shout out. Um, him and Brandon and have, you know, obviously Tyler has been there pretty much the whole time. Brandon has been building this brand. Um, he has built a great brand. Um, I don't think Tyler's going to have a, a problem. Um, doing business or keeping up where Brandon had left off. Uh, and I'm sure Brandon will probably still have a little insight, you know, just helping him out, you know. But like I said, a lot of people don't know that Tyler was right there behind the behind the scene too with Carp King too. So, but shout out to him, man. Shout out. Can't wait to see, you know, what he does with it. Um, I'm sure he's been in the talk with Billy, you know. So, um, you know, you never know. You might see Carp King um, come to a lot of different places. Uh, awesome. Yeah. But obviously, you know, I'm sure Indy Lakes is going to be the number one priority, which, you know, it should because that's where the brand was built. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So, um, Also, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Yeah, everybody that's out here watching or... You know, you if you're not a subscriber, subscribe, subscriber so, yet. Yeah, subscriber. You. Subscriber. <laughs> if yeah. you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, yeah, uh, uh, try to go do that. Yeah. That way, you know, whenever Helps we, us out support us you know, because we're actually live here, but we are actually video recording too. Yeah. Um, and we put that up on our YouTube channel with all the pictures and stuff that you guys don't get to see. You know, yeah. all the pictures of the see, see, ghost car, all the amazing and, and, uh, fish that Rick's caught. I mean, we're sitting here looking yeah. at them, and there's some not nice, beautiful, you know, beautiful. Big, big fish. Yeah. Beautiful but, backgrounds. Yeah. So. But, uh, uh, what do you got? Anything else? I'm not about done. Oh, for your online bank, uh, bank shops, Big, big Carbon, Carbon Tackle. Tackle. Yep. Get on the, get on the horns. Especially Wild Water guys, they yeah. have. Uh, oh, yeah. And Pathfinders. Yep. Pathfinders. Pathfinders. Look up Pathfinders too. Like I said, they're better, they're based out of here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. Uh, they're lo they're located in Beach Grove. We're getting ready to do a good video on this here soon. Yeah, I'm gonna be making some. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn these water bags. I'm gonna turn them into a bait bag. Yeah. Or show something. you how convenient, how easy it is. Dry so, bags. Yep. To well. keep your bait dry, or you know, <laughs> uh, how easy it is to make all your bait yeah. in there, and then stack some boilies in there in the bag, and then put them on your back, and then just carry it to your spot. Yeah. You know, they'll keep all your. You know, if you want, stuff. we just got a whole lot of yeah. stuff going on. Um, we're trying to do bigger and better things uh, this year. Um, another thing I want to put out there too, man, that we're kind of we're we haven't really come up with the master plan yet, but we're trying to. We there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of sponsors, really? but we want a major sponsor. Ship. Um, we're trying to do everything on our end, you know, to obviously help with carp care and, you know, and get the word out about carp fishing because carp fishing has gotten so big over the years. Like, we're going to be looking for, like, a main sponsor that would, you know, obviously help sponsor, like, the Just team. like this. You know, if, so if you guys got some ideas or no, maybe, you know, if you're watching that, this and, and that's you, um, hit James Sanders up. Or or you can hit me up too, and then one you know we, we or one of the teammates or something. You know it could be somebody's boss or whatever it may be. You know we are in the looks for that. We don't know what all it, it would consist of at this moment, but we you know we're we're it, it's in the works and we're looking. Bigger so, and better yeah, things. Yeah, it's we're just trying to go big and better. And another person I want to shout out is. Oh, yeah, I mean, I want to. I want to shout out. Shouty person. Today. Yeah, I want to shout out Naptown Monsters, man. Naptown Monsters. Uh, they've done a lot. They're gonna do a lot. Just within their little team, um, 
If everybody don't know, they're going to be at the Chili Meet uh, with their booth. You'll be able to check them out, stuff like that. But appreciate everything you guys are doing, uh, especially with the raffles. And I think they just uh, they just added another team member too. What is that? Yep, I think uh, Kyle Pearson. Oh, nice. So congratulations, yeah. Kyle. Good job, Kyle. But I think he just got on the team and. Uh, but yeah, you guys to check them out the chili meat, they'll be there too. Be a lot of people there. Nice. So I'm done. You done? Yep. I'm done. Appreciate yep. everybody tuning in. Like I said, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the little button. That way every time we post a video, you know, we get that. So, subscribe. Say it one say it one more time. Say it. Say your oh, say your no, say it. Say subscribe. Oh. Yeah, subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> so, thank you guys, man. And we'll see y'all later. Talk to you guys later. Bye.